Only Murders in the Building Season 2 premiered with two episodes. We are going over all the possible clues and rabbit holes. A full review with other possible clues will be available tomorrow. We got a lot going on, so come with me as we decode Only Murders in the Building. Episode 1 starts with the interrogation of the podcasters. Detective Kreps bring up and plays part of episode 1 of the podcast, where Mabel states she dreams of stabbing someone with her knitting needle. One of my subscribers, I believe it was Morticia, please forgive me if I'm wrong, brought this up months ago. The fact that anyone who listens to the podcast could have heard Mabel say this and use this to frame her. To me, Detective bringing this up is a moot point. We found out that Bunny was stabbed with a knife eight times, so it seems I might have been partially right. Bunny was indeed stabbed with a knife and likely went to Mabel for help. We get glimpses of Bunny inside Mabel's apartment. Mabel had champagne, so nothing is coming out clear about what happened that night, but it does appear that she had a knitting needle in her chest when she approached Mabel. Later, as her memory becomes a little more clear, she says 14, and even later, the name Savage. We know that Charles lives on the 14th floor and that his last name is Hayden Savage. We assume that Bunny would attempt to name her killer in her final breath. I don't know, maybe she did, but we do need to go over some other things before we can make any sense of that. First, who I believe is a red herring, Alice. I stated in the last video that I think she is a red herring and I feel even more so now. This woman slid into Mabel's DMs and openly states that she wants to add Mabel to her collective of artists. I think she only wants to do this as Mabel is a big name right now. She even tells Mabel it's not a bad place to start from. In episode 2, she directly tells Mabel that she has had an artistic block and hasn't created anything for over a year. Alice has nothing that's being talked about until she suggests that Mabel destroys a statue that she says is supposed to be her. I don't even believe that this statue is supposed to be Mabel. This could have been something that she created years ago and she is using as a ruse to get Mabel to take part in her idea for a video project that she wants to record. Not to help Mabel, she doesn't really like her art. She's trying to stay relevant and by having bloody Mabel with an ax in her new art project, She's bound to get some new eyes on her work. I don't think she has anything to do with Bunny's murder, but she will be important to Mabel's arc. Next, we have the Rose Cooper painting that's owned by Leonora Folger, but displayed in Bunny's apartment. It has since gone missing. There's so much to take in about this painting and it looks to be a central plot point. The erotic painting titled Savage shows the father of Charles Hayden Savage entwined in a mystery woman. The painting was painted by Rose Cooper who lived in an apartment building across from the Arconia. Charles used to go there as a child with his father under the guise that he was auditioning as an actor, but in reality he was having an affair with Rose Cooper and Leonora Folger, causing Charles to question if Bunny could in fact be his sister. Rose Cooper disappeared after selling the savage painting to Leonora Folger, presumed dead, she was said to be trying to get away from an unknown man. We later found out that the painting that our podcasters have been lugging around is not Leonora's, but said to be a replication. Why and how would someone be able to do this and put it inside Charles' apartment? At first, my thoughts went to Alice. I mean, she is an artist, but replicating a piece like this takes a certain type of skill. It's not anything that can just be done overnight. Whoever this was that replicated this painting, if it is not just a second painting that was already created by the artist, was very familiar with this painting and knew that Charles's father was in it and wanted it. The idea of relatives have been pressed a lot these two episodes. We have the reboot of Brazos, where he is said to be playing Uncle Brazos, the nude board president, Nina Lynn, glowing with maternity vibes, Mabel talking about doing puzzles when she was small. With Lucy peering later in the series, we see a young Charles. Family is going to be a big theme, and I'm guessing someone might be related to Charles. With the affair captured on canvas 
and though their mother disappeared and is likely dead or grandmother, they want this painting as something to remember her by, something to hold on to. And through this painting, they were able to figure out that the man in the painting was their father and they likely feel some animosity towards Charles for the time he was able to spend with their father and is now antagonizing him, feeling Charles was able to have the life they never did. Next, our newest note tied into the painting. It was a card given to Bunny Folger saying, I want that painting, Bunny Folger. Oliver looked at this card with the eye of familiarity. I'm guessing that it's going to be the same handwriting as a note left on his door and the same person that threatened to end his life. There's clearly another person in this mix and it seems to be the same person who wanted the podcast to end. Quick little side note, I was surprised to see that the secret elevator showed up so quickly in the show. I pointed out the elevator in my last trailer breakdown and I was only partially right though. Bunny indeed was stabbed with a knife and then with a kneading needle like I said and we know that she was trying to get help from Mabel but it looks as if Mabel and Charles both might have secret entrances to their apartments. This would explain how Bunny could just appear in Mabel's room and how someone was able to sneak the painting inside Charles place too. Someone who has lived in the Arconia for a long time, long enough to know its secrets. Wait a second, let's not get fooled. I'm not saying it's the case, but I mentioned in my last video that we have to be careful. Clearly, this painting is being poised as a central part of what appears to be in the investigation. But remember, in season one, stolen jewelry and Teddy Demas were at the center of the investigation, but had little to do with the actual murder. This could still be someone was an opportunist using Bunny's murder to get the painting. The two are not necessarily tied together. We must keep this in the back of our mind. A little hole I went down, I noticed that Howard and Amy both mentioned that they knew Jane was the killer in episode 8 of the podcast. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if this was a subliminal clue to go back to season 1, episode 8, and it's Maybe something fishy came up, and maybe that is where we could find the killer. I'll just let you know, this was the episode with the super fans, the kidnapping and bringing back of two of our podcasters to the Arconia. Teddy talks about how he was ashamed to have a son, and the beauty and silence. This is where the trio learns what was on Tim Kono's phone. This is also when Jan got the note on her door saying that I'm watching you and it ended with the montage of everyone listening to the false end of the podcast titled Demas Takes a Dip. Now there are so many people in this episode, but Indeedy does not show up. That and the fact that we have a new character as the new board president, who I'm assuming will be a suspect. I've already got too big of a hole in my theory and I'm going to have to change it up. That's why I'm going all in with Howard Morris. He said he hoped one day he could have the painting like the one on Bunny's wall. The only other person we know that wants that painting was the person who gave Bunny a somewhat threatening card. Inside Bunny's apartment, when Uma realized the painting was gone, Howard was giving her a strange side eye before he screamed alongside her as if he may have already known that it was gone, but wasn't sure how to act. We then had him showing up to get our podcasters to go to Bunny's memorial with a really bad story about how he got a black guy. Now, if it's not him, someone is pressuring him to get in the good graces with our podcasters, but it seems it's similar to what Jan did, attempting to put himself in the investigation when he himself is guilty. He tried to give the podcasters ideas for episodes, put up the new board president as a person who could be guilty, and let's not forget, he was literally coaching the bird, Mrs. Gambolini, to say that he was a good person and a friend. Likely trying to mask what he said in her presence that would put him in a bad light. Again, 
Someone could be making the most of this opportunity with the painting and it could have nothing to do with the killing. Howard knows this and is trying to get a bigger fish. Until we get more information, my bets are on Howard, a secret relative of Charles Hayden Savage. Those are all my ideas on the clues and possible hidden details in our first two episodes. Remember to check back tomorrow for full episode reviews and any other clues I was able to muster up. Did I miss anything? Has your idea for Bunny's Killer changed? Let me know down in the comments. My name is Dallas. This is all my favorite things from the screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the rooftop.